Ladies and germs, welcome to Morris Custom Bicycles. Today I want to talk about the whole tubeless thing. And the, the reason that is, is because I'm uh, being inundated with uh, questions about tubeless tires. Um, you know, as the cycling season uh, begins in earnest here, people are getting out and riding on their bikes, and they're inevitably getting flats. In my area, there, um, there are tons of thorns and goat heads and all the, all the nastiness seems to be present in my area. And it's, it's not uncommon uh, to go out on a bike ride and to, to have three punctures in, in one ride. And so people hear about the um, tubeless thing and, and um, they figure that's the best way to avoid uh, fixing flats and so you know they're they're excited to adopt this for those of you who've been cycling for a while or or are uh, avid cyclists uh, this is not a new thing but the uh, tubeless systems um, seem to be um, trickling down uh, to more mainstream and uh, and I'm not sure how I feel about that exactly um, but uh, I am a fan of uh, the tubeless tire system. It does have its limitations, and, and we can talk a little bit about that here. But um, generally speaking, I, I think it's a great thing. And, and if you're uh, on a mountain bike, especially out in the Midwest somewhere or in the, in the desert, um, tubeless is just a great way to go. So <clears throat> let's talk about this here for a little bit here and see if we can clear some things up. For those of you who are, you know, already on board with the tubeless thing, this video is probably not going to be for you. Um, but uh, I'm just going to try to explain what it is a little bit and then, you know, why you would use it and, and maybe some of the thing, reasons why tubeless is not a good idea. So, for starters, uh, obviously a tubeless system is where you have a tire and wheel in which you omit the inner tube, hence the name tubeless. So here's just your kind of average uh, road wheel setup here. Uh, I've got a tire and underneath the tire is the inner tube and underneath the inner tube you have a rim strip, which is this uh, green thing here. And so if you're going to adopt the tubeless system, you're going to get a tire that is airtight and you're going to replace this standard uh, rim strip with an airtight rim strip. It's basically comes in the form of uh, tape and you'll uh, tape the, the rim with a special tape um, and uh, that will cause an airtight seal <clears throat> so that you don't have air leaking out through the uh, spoke holes in the rim. Uh, on top of that, you're also going to use uh, sealant. There are several brands out there that make sealant. Uh, I've been using stands for many years now, and it's it's been good stuff. I've had really good luck with it. Um, but there there are other there are other products out there. Uh, but the sealant is necessary to go inside the tire, and the sealant will coat the rim strip, and will coat the inside of the tire, ensuring that uh, there's that it's airtight. Uh, the sealant will also settle, um, you know, in on the bead of the tire and the hook of the rim. Uh, again, ensuring that there's just an airtight seal. So, um, obviously, the benefit then is that if you're riding along and you do get a thorn, well, the sealant that's in there to keep everything airtight will quickly um seal up the hole from the thorn and there you go and so that's why um people are um you know adopting the the system the tubeless system because it's just very it's very nice when you're out on the trail uh on some of my bikes that are set up tubeless you know i've gone out on rides and i've probably gotten all sorts of punctures and i'm just unaware um because the tubeless system works so well so let's get to the caveats here. <laughs> um, the, um, when I have customers call, they're, they're excited to adopt this, but they don't always understand the, the parameters uh, with this. So, so for starters, if you have 
a wheel like this and you're running a 25, is this a 25 or 23? This is a, this is bigger than that. Um, but if you have like a 25 tire, um, the, the odds of the tubeless system working are not very good. Um, uh, so this is, it's just hang in there for a minute. <laughs> so it is, it is my belief and this is just from my experience on working on these systems, if you have a road tire, let's say that's 28 millimeters and under, and we're talking width here. If it's 28 millimeters and under, I think the tubeless system is, is not, uh, that great of an idea. Now, uh, there are folks out there that, that run 25 tires tubeless and uh, 28 tires tubeless and, and they'll tell you that they've, they've had just awesome success. And that, that may be. Um, I know it's uh, Silka, I think, it makes a um, sealant that supposedly works with narrower kind of road tires. And that may be something to look into. I don't know a lot about the Silka stuff. I, you know, from what I've heard, it's just, it's really thick. And um, the, the sealant is, is more of just an active glue. And, and so maybe, maybe, maybe that will work with those tires, but your average kind of stands or orange or whatever, I, I just have not seen good success with the, the smaller width tires. And, and the reason um, for that is because <clears throat> These tires here, the, the average road tire, 28 and under, is very low volume of air. So there's not much, the, the amount of air that goes in this tire is, is nothing, but it's under a lot of pressure. You know, you're gonna run this at, you know, 100 PSI or so. And so um, that situation or that environment doesn't seem to work so well with the sealant. If you have a tire like this, and this, this wheel here is, is already tubeless set up. Uh, if you have a situation where you have a really wide tire, this is a three inch wide tire. Um, this situation, um, you know, there's a lot of volume of air in here, but it's under hardly any pressure. So this is tons of air, the amount of air in this tire is a lot. And I think I'm running these around 12 PSI. So a lot of air. Uh, under very little pressure, 12 PSI. Here you have very little air under a lot of pressure, 100 PSI. And so, uh, and, and I've, I've been there, I've been on rides where people have gotten punctures with these type of uh, tires, and it is a mess. Um, because they're riding along, all of a sudden they get a puncture, this white fluid starts shooting out all over the place, and it sprays all over the rider and the bike, and, and if you're too close, you'll get some on your you yourself, and it's just a mess. And then you're gonna have to um, pop the bead off. <clears throat> you're gonna have to try to you know, wipe wipe out the, the fluid and then install an inner tube. So you're already gonna carry an inner tube uh, and then reinflate just traditional style. So, <clears throat> um, you know, that's why, you know, I, if you're over 28 millimeters, you know, wide, um, I think the, the odds of success are just m much greater. Um, and that brings me to the next point of uh, adopting this, because if you want to just, hey, you know, I saw on YouTube that I can easily just change out the rim strip on my bike and then add the fluid, I'm good to go. <clears throat> well, <laughs> There's a few things to consider here. For starters, uh, the type of tire that you're running. If the tire on your current bike that's not tubeless, um, you know, uh, if it's not set up tubeless and you bought the bike from the bike shop, it, it still may be a tubeless ready tire. Um, the tires, like this one, has a mark on it. Uh, tubeless easy is what this one says. And there's usually marks on the tire. Um, some say tubeless ready or tubeless compatible or UST or, you know, there's all these, there'll be marks on the tire basically. <clears throat> and so uh, if you see that, then you know the tire is good to go and is gon going to be easily adopted into, you know, running without an inner tube and sealant and all that stuff. Um, but people will bring me bikes 
uh, that have tires like this. This is a great tire. This is a Schwalbe knobby nick, and it's got their, you know, kind of uh, fancy rubber compound. <clears throat> this is actually one of my favorite tires, but this is not tubeless uh, compatible. This won't work. And some of you are saying, hey, well, wait a minute. <clears throat> I, I have a tire on my bike. It doesn't say anything tubeless, and, and I convert it over, and it's totally fine. And that may be. Uh, I myself have converted over um, tires that don't have any tubeless ready marks on the sidewalls. And it is possible that you can take a tire and, uh, and, and adopt it to the tubeless system, um, but not this one. <clears throat> and the reason being is that this one is a wire bead tire. So that the bead of this tire uh, has metal on it, has wire, uh, steel wire in there. And that helps the tire keep its shape and uh, helps it um, um, marry into the hook of the rim. So what you need is a tire <clears throat> that at minimum is a Kevlar bead on it. If you have a Kevlar bead tire, um, odds are, even if it doesn't have the, the little tubeless mark on the sidewall, uh, it, it could work. Um, I, I personally don't recommend doing it. I would just hold out and buy the tire that says tubeless on it so that way you know you're ready to go. But there are plenty of people out there that have tires that are Kevlar bead, that don't say anything about tubeless on them, and they, they, they run them tubeless just fine. So I, I, I get that. But in, in today's environment with, uh, with wheel setups, <clears throat> Most tires now that are, are Kevlar bead are probably going to be tubeless ready because tubeless is just such a common thing now. So, um, <clears throat> the, the reasons you may not want to adopt this system <clears throat> is just the, the tooling um, and, and meaning an air compressor that uh, you need to have a whole bunch of air uh, ready to go uh, into the tire, uh, um, it's very important that, that you do this. So basically after you set up the tire and you, you get the sealant in it and you have the rim strip and you've got the right tire, the um, air compressor is used because you want to inflate this very quickly because you want to move the uh, bead of the tire into the hook of the rim as quickly as possible so that you can start building air pressure. If you have a wire bead tire, the wire bead tends to just hold the uh, bead away from the, the hook of the rim and you just will never build up any kind of air pressure. Um, the, the Kevlar beaded tires, are, they're just more malleable and they tend to want to run into the hook of the rim easier. And it can be kind of frustrating, you know, even if you have the correct tire and you've got the sealant in and you've got the rim strip in, it can be a little frustrating even with an air compressor to, to get some of these tires to seat and uh, start building pressure. Um, so you have to be patient, but the wire beads um, on, on tires are, will make it nearly impossible. I'm sure there are people out there that have done it, um, but from my experience, in, and, and, I, and I've tried, uh, a couple months ago I actually had a, a customer bring me a bike and, and I gave it a try. <laughs> I tried, tried doing it and I did just, I spent like an hour trying to, uh, you know, get, get the uh, tire to seat onto the rim and I just couldn't do it. So, so it's very important that, uh, that you have the, the right tire, get the right rim strip, uh, and the rim strips come in different widths and it's important to get the, the correct width, uh, and otherwise, you know, uh, you can have, leakage and no one wants leakage that's not good so um <clears throat> so if you have a bike that has tubeless ready tires it, it can be done relatively cheap you're just looking at getting the proper rim strip and then uh getting the valve and then getting the sealant and then setting it up but if you don't have an air compressor it will probably make it not possible for you to make the the change yourself. And that's why I would recommend you bring it to a bike shop and they can set it up for you. And then once they're set up, then you all you have to worry about is just maintaining uh, the tire. And that's the next step that I, I want to talk about is, is how do you maintain the tire once you have it set up, you've got all the sealant in it and you've been riding it for a while. Um, 
what what is uh, the maintenance that I need to do to keep this system working all right so if you do make the change to tubeless and you've got it all set up on your bike um, well you're doing pretty good and um, you're gonna be happy but there are some maintenance things to consider there are also uh, a factor to consider is how often you ride your bike. If you're not on your bike regularly, uh, the sealant will just pool up in the bottom of the rim, or bottom of the tire, rather. And um, so if you're someone who uh, just rides, you know, the summer months, and then you put your bike away and store it for the winter or whatnot, the uh, sealant will just go down to the bottom and then the tire will lose um, air pressure and then slowly it'll go flat and then the, the sealant tends to just dry out on the bottom. And, uh, and that can cause problems when you come back, you know, to the summer and uh, you discover that the tires are flat. And so you'll go and put a pump and pressure it back up <clears throat> and it will hold air for a while, but it won't hold air for nearly as long. And if you do get a puncture, uh, the sealant's dried up, so therefore, you know, it's, it's no good. So, uh, if you do store your bike, you want to go find your bike every once in a while, you know, once a week, three times a month, something like that. And you want to spend some time spinning the wheels or take your bike for just a quick lap around the block. Something to keep that sealant sploshed and slushed up, if that's a word. Uh, onto the rim strip and the inside of the tire so that we can make sure it's all maintained. Um, uh, also, you know, from time to time, you're just going to have to uh, maybe add, add pressure to the system. Um, you know, any, any tire system, even butyl um, inner tubes, lose air over time. And so, you know, again, if, if you put your bike away for a while, make sure there's plenty of pressure in it, make sure the sealant's sloshed around and, and you'll be good to go. So uh, if you do all this stuff, you're gonna be in pretty good shape, but they're gonna, there, there will be a time when the sealant will have run its course and it will have dried up and it will have kind of dissipated within the fabric and fibers of the rim strip and the tire. And so you need to check the sealant from time to time. And so annually, you know, once a year, uh, I suggest kind of doing a more thorough check of your sealant. And the, the first thing you can do is, is simply just um, shake the wheel and you should be able to hear the sealant, you know, splashing around in there. So, um, yeah, there's, I don't hear anything on this wheel. So, so the sealant is uh, no more in there. So, uh, so what we have to do is we have to <clears throat> go through a procedure just to top this off with sealant, and then we should be good for another season or so. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so um, we're gonna check the, the sealant level in the tire. And so the best way to do this is to keep the wheels in the bike. And if you have like a work stand, put it in a work stand. Or if you have uh, some kind of uh, way of storing your bike where the bike is off the ground, uh, that's the best way to do it. You can, you can also flip the bike upside down on its handlebars and see if you can do that gently enough. Um, because we don't wanna put any weight on the tires. And so, for the uh, purposes of this video, I'm just going to put the wheel in a, uh, this vise here and um, make it easier to see what's going on. There we go. And then what we're going to want to do is, is we're going to want to give this wheel uh, a few minutes here just to make sure that all the sealant is running down to the bottom. And once the sealant's down there in the bottom, then, you know, we can try to measure it. Uh, the other thing to do um, is we're going to have to obviously uh, let there out and pull the valve out uh, of the stem here. Um, but in doing all this, we have to be careful not to break the seal of the tire with the rim. 
So we want to make sure that the bead of the tire stays in the hook of the rim and um, that that integrity stays nice and solid. It, if you do break that seal, you know, we're going to need an air compressor again to reinflate the tire. And, you know, we don't want to do that. We want to stay away from the air compressor and, um, and, and just not monkey with the seal of the tire at all. So, uh, so now I'll just let out the air and we'll pull the, the valve out here. Again, there's a lot of volume and air in this tire, but uh, it's uh, under hardly any pressure. So, <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and pull the valve. Uh, where's my valve tool? There we go. Okay, so I pulled the valve out. And that looks nice and clean. It's nothing wet. So we're okay there. <clears throat> now, um, what I do on this tire, because this is such a fat tire, um, usually, you know, you can use like the uh, uh, WD-40 straw or something to fit in there. But uh, because the tire is so large on this bike, um, I'm not able to do that. So I have a piece of weld wire uh, that, that I'll use instead. And I'm just gonna dip it, just like checking the oil in your car. I'm just gonna dip this in here and see. Just go all the way till it stops, and then we'll pull it out. Yeah, there's nothing. It's dry. <laughs> it's dry as a bone down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing. There's, there's nothing on the end of this thing at all. So, uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, no, no fluid down there. So, so now we're gonna have to um, fill up the the tire with sealant. Okay, so now all we do is uh, add the sealant, and uh, you want to shake the sealant up. You want to mix those little rubber particles <clears throat> into the uh, fluid here. Make sure you get a nice even distribution of particles in the fluid <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the uh, stand syringe and that one thing you want to do is <clears throat> while the valve's out you want to check and make sure that the ring is tight and uh, if it's tight then you're good to go <clears throat> add some sealant and for this uh, for this tire because it's a <clears throat> large volume tire. I'm gonna use a full two two ounces of uh, fluid here, sealant. So get this thing threaded on. This thing's all dirty. It's about time I get a new one. <clears throat> I just pull up and down on this <clears throat> plunger a few times to make sure it all gets in. And then we're good. Okay. And we're gonna have to mop up the leakage. And again, we wanna check that the valve, make sure the valve stem is is uh, making a good seal on the rim. There we go. Yeah, that stuff is nasty. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Okay. Once we've got that fluid in, we'll just reinstall the 
valve core here. Everything looks nice and clean, so should be good to go. All right, so um, if you have a pump, now's the time you, you start going crazy with the pump. Uh, if you have a compressor, use a compressor. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. It's just quicker. And uh, I'm just gonna set up it. You just go start off 15 PSI and start from there. <clears throat> All right. So make sure you're good to go there. And then once you get air in it, you're going to want to start moving the tire around. <clears throat> and yeah, you can hear it sloshing around in there so that's a good sign so now now we've 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 got this uh liquid sloshing around like it should be and coating everything and so this tire is uh good to go and uh, i actually just want to demonstrate one more thing about this uh tire so this should be a fun little test here um on this tire uh, that we just refreshed with sealant here there are two goat head thorns sticking in here and uh so there's two here and i think there might be another thorn right here i'm gonna have to dig out uh the rest of the tire looks pretty pretty good here i think it's just those three spots but what i'm gonna do uh for fun and giggles <clears throat> just to kind of show how this works is i'm gonna pull these two thorns out and then i'm just gonna give the tire a spin and you can kind of see it Go to work. So there's one. Here's another one. You can hear it. You can hear it leaking. So I'm just gonna, gonna give it a spin here. <clears throat> yeah. Whoa. Oh, there it goes. And now it's clogged. <laughs> so, uh, so it's done its job. So I pulled out two, and it. You know, within just, uh, I don't know, five or six seconds. And the, the tire is still very firm. Uh, I put about 15 PSI in it. But here again, this demonstrates why um, high volume, low pressure tires work great with the system. Because I'm going to, you know, if I were to pick that up on a ride, I wouldn't even know. It would throw out and it would just clog up and do its job. And uh, I wouldn't have any, where's the other one? <laughs> the other hole. But you can see this one. So yeah, so it's done its job. Uh, it's a fantastic system. And I may have to dig that one out here a little bit later. But yeah, as long as the wheel's moving, the sealant can find the hole and it's good to go. Uh, this is a great way to go. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of the tubeless system. And, uh, and you got to see it in action here. And so um, if, if you do have the ability to make the change, I would recommend to do so. Uh, if you're not riding your bike all the time and you store it for large portions of the year, then maybe it's not for you. Uh, if you don't want to go through the process of checking the fluid and um, purchasing the, the correct tires and rim strip, then you know maybe it's not for you. But I think overall, uh, it's a good idea, and um, anyway, so that'll end this lengthy presentation on the tubeless tire system. Uh, I appreciate you um, hanging in there and, and watching this, and I, I do, I am, I am grateful for all six of you who uh, frequent my channel, and uh, I will speak to you folks next time.